Kay McIntyre. Alan McIntyre. Betty Swigelbeck. Well, I think the purpose of our gathering today was to reminisce a little bit about life on the home front during World War II. Is that right? That's what we want to talk about today? Yes, and, I think so. Yeah. You bet. Um, and I, I was just telling some people that I do remember Pearl Harbor Day. I was very young. I was only five, but I remember it because I was mad at my oldest sister because she had taken the radio from downstairs up to her bedroom upstairs because you could get better reception. And all of a sudden, she came flying down the steps and said that, that the Japs had bombed Pearl Harbor. Well, I didn't know where Pearl Harbor was. I thought it was next door. So it was a very frightening <laughs> day, you know. But I do remember it. Yeah. Well, you, Ellen? I, I remember, uh, you know, we played in the neighborhood a lot, and we were outside a lot. My father always said, don't come in until you're bleeding. <laughs> but uh, really, my mother, uh, it was hard on my mother because uh, she was left with uh, Kay Ling and I, and uh, she did work for Judge Sundral on a part-time basis. Uh, but that was a burden. But the, the, the plus and uh, the godly thing that happened to us was we had relatives here in the community. Uh, my grandmother Peterson lived with us half the year and then half the year with my aunt and uncle Berglunds. And so that was a help for mother. But I don't think we were much of a help for grandma. Uh, <laughs> she would just, it, it, it got too much for her. And then I remember exactly what she said, Lord, give me understanding power with these children. <laughs> <laughs> and right or wrong, I don't think I've changed. <laughs> you could ask my wife about that. Uh, Grandmother McIntyre was in Bowman, so she was nearby. And my aunt and uncle uh, uh, Hogabones were in Bowman. So they were it. So there was some ongoing connection that helped take up time and helped my mother. Uh, as far as dad was concerned, why he would communicate with Kay Ling and I with cards. I got a card on St. Patrick's Day or I got a letter and a note. And of course my mother got a lot of correspondence from him. And he wrote uh, for the Stars and Stripes uh, in the Army. And he was also on Armed Forces Radio for a while, but we never got to hear that. But Mother had also saved in a book all the articles he sent to the Bowman County Pioneer reporting in France from the war. He had uh, wounded twice, and so they transferred him to the Air Forces. And he was the Army correspondence with the Air Forces. I don't know what that means, but anyway, we we have an awful lot of library uh, from his articles. Uh, I can remember another uh, breaker for my mother. Uh, we rented, and she uh, got notice that the landlord was raising the rent $5 a month. And our rent at that time was $25 a month. Doesn't seem possible, does it? It's but, true, though. Ours was too. Yeah. Anyway, come to have it, the law at that time was if your husband was in overseas, you couldn't raise those rates. So oh. she was very, very happy about that. We didn't have a car. We walked everywhere mm -hmm. except my cousin Dale Berglund in times of need or in stormy weather would give us a ride to school. Otherwise, we, we walked. Uh, so that's my first memory of those particular days. Both Kay and I were somewhere in there between five and eight. I think we might have been eight 
in 1945 where the war ended. Well, we were born in 37, so, yeah. you know, most of my brothers and sisters were too small. They wouldn't remember anything. Mm -hmm. And life that I remember was just like it always was because Dad was not in the service and uh, Mother was, you know, just being a mother. And the only thing I can really remember is that my aunt lived in Bismarck and Mother bought coupons at the uh, courthouse so I could buy sandals. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, anything to do with um, career, service, veterans was much later. Mm -hmm. And uh, the boys, uh, four of the boys were in that Navy. But you know, that was not during the war. How did the coupons work? I, I really don't know. I know that I had to take it up there with me when I went. So That's, you went to Bismarck to get them? No, she went to the courthouse oh, to get them, but okay. I got shoes in Bismarck. Oh, okay. But I had to use the coupons. You were allowed so many stamps per child in the family. Uh, and I remember uh, one pair of shoes a year was pretty good. And maintaining those shoes was really a problem. <laughs> you know, and we used to be able to buy the half soles for shoes, and it would come with a, a little jar of glue. It wasn't very good glue, but we would glue those half soles on our shoes, and the first rainstorm would pretty much take care of that, so we'd go down the street <laughs> with our <laughs> flapping in the wind. But, um, you know, life in the neighborhood was, was fun. The, the three of us were raised in the same neighborhood. McIntyre's were right across the street from us, and then Kay was just down the, the block. And uh, we played together all the time. And Alan mentioned that there weren't, uh, they didn't have a car, we didn't have a car, but not everyone in town had a car then. So we could play in the street all we wanted to. There was not a fear of traffic getting us. Unfortunately, our, <laughs> our mothers could say, go play in the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the the uh, uh, it wasn't just uh, for clothing either. No, it, it was, was for some food products that you could get with those uh, tokens or whatever they were. And tires and gasoline yes. and everything. Everything was rationed. Basically, everything for the war effort. And people didn't complain that I recall. I mean, our mother never complained. She just worried how she was going to stretch things to last until the next yes. ration book came. But um, sugar was rationed. So you'd have to snitch it if you were going to make fudge, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as our lives in the neighborhood, uh, we had we just had a wonderful neighborhood to grow up in. So and that, I think, uh, kept us out of the, in some situations where uh, we didn't recognize how tough it was on our mother, mm -hmm. or even our father, mm -hmm. for that matter. Because, uh, and then I think she kept a few things from us too, to, to help us. But I, we had lots of fun on the neighborhood. I think the grown-ups did try to shield us from a lot of the bad news. But, you know, during that time, the news was always late. Oh, yeah. You know, because they got their news from the newspapers, which was long after the fact sometimes. Radio reception was not good, so you didn't always hear the broadcasts. Um, it was really not until our own local soldiers started being killed in battle that it really struck home for us. Uh, when the two stocking boys were, were killed within six months time mm -hmm. and uh, Steve Bird and mm -hmm. uh, you know several others, it really brought things home. Even to us little kids, you know at that time uh, when the guys graduated from high school they went right to the recruiting office I mean, they, they just knew they were going into the service. And a lot of them even quit high school 
to go into the service, lied about their age and got away with it. I don't know how they got away with it, but they did. Well, uh, back in the later years, of course, this wasn't during World War II, but if if you 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 could apply to go into the service if you were 17, but both parents had to sign for you. Mm -hmm. And my father, having been in the service, signed for me. But guess what mother did? <laughs> for her little boy, she wouldn't sign. <laughs> well, it was interesting times, but um, I recall several different instances. Um, and I think of it as civil defense, but I don't think it was called that at the time. But these kids probably don't remember it, but we actually had ray, uh, blackout raids where you'd have to keep the lights very low and pull the shades down. And uh, Glenn Emsch was the um, air warden or whatever their title was at the time for our neighborhood. And I remember him coming and knocking on the door and just checking to see that everybody was okay. And yeah, he was keep just a block from west, us. Yeah, but keep your shades down. You know, that was kind of scary for little kids. Didn't quite understand what it was. But uh, I think all in all, our parents did try very hard to shield us and protect us from all the icky news. But you could still overhear their conversations, and they would talk about this battle or that battle. And, mm -hmm. and um, I just felt real uh, fortunate to have had some of our family so close. That helped an awful lot because mm -hmm. we would get to go out to the Bergman farm, or we'd get to go to Bowman with Grandma McIntyre, or see Aunt and Uncle mm -hmm. Hogaboom. Uh, so I think that helped us uh, kind of separate sometimes from what was really going on. How much did gas cost back then? I don't know. Oh, it, it was less than 20 cents a gallon. <laughs> and yet it was rationed. Yeah. Yeah. Tires were such a, a rarity. Do you remember that? Cars that would go by, oh, they all had patches on their tires. Oh, sure. Remember the pink patches on yeah. the tires? <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. But as far as growing up in our neighborhood, we, we just had a wonderful neighborhood to, to play in and, and to grow. We spent a lot of time in, in Clement's Pasture up on Shelf Rock. Oh, Shelf Rock, absolutely. And uh, we played a lot of ball. There was no organized type of uh, recreation Activity. for us in our generation. We made up our own and made up our own rules. We didn't know the rules to the baseball, so we just made up our own. Well, some made up rules and, and then, games. Yeah, there, there were some that kept changing the rules. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have been Kay. Yeah, it probably was. <laughs> but, you know, then, too, um, at that time, all of us kids had chores to do at home. So we usually were not outside playing in the mornings. It was after the dishes were done at noon, then the kids started showing up. But nighttime was particularly fun when we played night games. Mm -hmm. Describe some of the night games. What, how do they yeah, go? do that, Betty. You go ahead and do it. <laughs> well, uh, no. No? Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't mention that. Oh, well, now you're at our interest peaked. <laughs> well, you know, we played Run My Good Sheep Run, King of the Hill. Yeah. Kick the Can. Now, what was that one to hide, though? You'd go and hide. Well, hide and seek. Hide yeah. and seek? <laughs> well, that's what they called that. That's, that's oh, what they called it. Sakes. I've told this story many times, but uh, our... Our home was right on the corner, and the street light was right out in front of our house. And it was just like 
Did you ever go to that movie, Field of Dreams, that baseball movie? Oh, yes. And that one scene where the famous baseball players started coming up out of the cornfield to come and play ball. That's the way it was when it started getting dark in the neighborhood. You, kids would start coming from every direction to meet at the at the streetlight. And it was fun. That was headquarters. All right. Yeah. And mom would always see it. Keep your friends out of my garden. <laughs> well, as I recall, your mother was always concerned about me getting she in said, trouble. She was. I don't know why she had that thought, but well, her description for Alan was that my he's a busy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think, in spite of the whole scenario of the war and all that. We had a pretty good life and a pretty good upbringing, short of some family. We just didn't have the material things that kids do now. And I think that's where we learned to be so conservative. We saved and reused everything from string to wrapping paper. I remember we would save en envelopes from the mail that we would get, and that's what us kids would color on or... Uh, play with and uh, that was not a bad lesson mm -hmm. for us to learn to be conservative um, we played uh, <clears throat> you know in our lot we had this huge tree oh, yeah. remember that tree I'll never forget and uh, everybody just loved to climb on it and we'd play it was kind of like playing war yes, in a it sense was. You'd have nurses, and then you'd have the pilots up in the tree, and we'd get wounded, and then we'd have to be taken care of by the nurses. Well, and... you stole your mother's perfume, and that was our medicine. <laughs> oh, I didn't remember that. Yes, you did. Uh, and she wasn't very happy with you. Well, I, I'm sure it was just an accident. Yeah. Guess who the pilot of the plane always was? <laughs> Mr. McIntyre. <laughs> The rest of us had other duties. <laughs> well, those duties were more important. Yeah. But, you know, that tree, uh, I think God put that special tree in that special yard just for us. I don't think it had ever been pruned to be shaped the no. way it was. No. It was just a, a tree that had wonderful branches that, you know, grew sideways for a ways, and then they'd grow up, and then they'd grow with that. It was wonderful. Is it still there? No, Aww. no, I'm, that's been gone for a long time. What about uh, school? What do you remember about school? Oh. Did, did the teachers say anything about the war? or did? I don't recall in the younger years. I started school when I was in, we lived in Fargo. Oh. And uh, we didn't even do any math. So when I got to... I don't remember. I was, our teachers talking about the war. Mm -hmm. so you did your math and your science and yeah. whatever you did. Vida Richardson was oh, okay. our uh, so second you, grade teacher. You were in the old schoolhouse. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Where was your room? I don't remember all the on rooms. The, uh, on the first floor. Yeah, probably. It was on the first floor. Yeah, it was kind of um, first grade started over here and then second grade and I don't remember the rooms yeah. all. Well, I remember my first year. It was the most traumatic year of my life. I cried every day. Um, our teacher's husband, and I'm sorry, I can't even tell you her name now, but her, her husband was in the service and he was killed. Oh. And he, she had a, a breakdown. And so we had no teacher. And when we went to school, there weren't any available substitute teachers either you know everybody was off working or gone west to the west coast and um, so we never knew who our teacher would be sometimes it was a high school girl sometimes it was Mr. Roberts he would come in mm -hmm. and, and teach us and it took until <coughs> March when Mr. Roberts finally talked Vida Richardson into coming back to teach oh. and she came and then followed us up into the second grade, or we would have been lost souls. Oh, wow. I I just think she did an absolute fantastic oh, job with us. Super. Well, she worked forever then. Yeah. Yeah. She just it was. She was still there when Tim was in the fifth grade. I know. Uh -huh. 
But what a wonderful second grade teacher. Yeah. What a wonderful teacher she was. And she, she just took us kids in. I mean, there I think there were like 40 of us in that class. Wow. So you can imagine all those little kids coming to school and not well, yeah. knowing who their teacher was going to be and what they were going to do. And it well, was, there were no any split classes at that no, time, were there? No. You, whatever you had in one grade, that's that's who you taught. Yeah. And, and, wow. uh, probably too many. Well, I'm sure it was. Yeah. But I've always been grateful to Vida for coming back to school. I don't know that she wanted to, but uh, she did. Uh, she went to our church, the Congregational Church, mm -hmm. and I got appointed to the North Dakota uh, School Board Association. And uh, she came out of church one day and she said, Ellen, you know, I don't remember that you were ever any interested in school. <laughs> I said, well, I'm trying to make it right. <laughs> and so I had to appear before the Senate committee, and I told them that story. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> and whether or not you like me, you have to vote for me. <laughs> Because oh. Vida said so. Yeah. Do you remember any community things like you hear about rubber drives or tin foil or metal drives? Or oh, sure. You saved everything. You saved every tin can. Yeah. Um, everything was recycled. And I know this sounds goofy, and kids look at me like I don't know what I'm talking about when I tell them this, but we even saved that little piece of aluminum foil on a gum wrapper. Huh. You remember those? And we would make... Uh, tin foil balls. Do you kids remember that at all? I don't. We'd make up. We'd make up, huh. and uh, it was fun for kids because you'd see who had the, the biggest tin foil ball. Huh. And in the, the schools, they gave kids the opportunity to uh, buy savings stamps. If you had a dime, you could buy. We hmm. we each had our own little book. I think I still got mine somewhere, where you. If you had a dime, you could buy a stamp and stick it in your in your book, and that was going to the war effort. Yeah, kids were involved in that as much as, as grown-ups, really. I don't really recall any city-wide drives, but... You know, that was after the war. Yeah, you know, that any of those kind of things, because I was a lot older then. Yeah. And I think that when the war was over... We didn't have TV or oh, any no. of those things to mm -hmm. tell us yeah. or advertise it or, you know. No. War bonds were, were big then. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And once in a while, my uncle would give me a war bond. Huh. Of course, I, I couldn't get my hands on it <laughs> <laughs> till a certain yeah. length of time. It was uh, so interesting. I, I don't know if you've seen some of the the posters that they had up, you know, encouraging people to buy war bonds, but they used the most beautiful movie stars ever in the world, you know, Rita Hayworth and mm. all all those, Loretta Young, all those beautiful, beautiful girls. And they'd have these lavish posters everywhere. And uh, you remember the one with Uncle Sam Pointing yeah, and saying, came. you know, Uncle Sam yeah. wants you. They were. The one I remember is uh, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> well, that was a little later. <laughs> <laughs> well, Uncle Sam was out when my kids were in school. Yeah. Yeah. So a, that was yeah. a long time later. Yeah. But, um, you know, when I remember going to school, we, you know, our town was... We had a creamery, we had a Pepsi-Cola, we had several drug stores, we had a place we could go get uh, drinks, mm -hmm. we had several grocery stores, three or four car dealers, and That's I right. don't think we really felt left behind yeah, or, right. or whatever because we were plum happy. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of reason to uh, rejoice. Yeah. And we made ourselves happy too because uh, inflation was bad. You know, prices were up, and uh, people didn't have the incomes that they had later mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. It just seemed that way. We 
we had, the only time we had beef was on Sundays. Otherwise, it was chicken, and then during the week it was uh, uh, but you know, I think dishes. That, yeah, and, that's and, how we were for a long time. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. just how we were. That's right. That's just what we did. I mean, it wasn't yeah. just all war. You know, you went out to Zimmerman's and got big pails of milk because you were... Uh, you know, had a lot of kids to feed. Mm -hmm. You squeezed the margarine so it would look yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is the way we lived, and I don't recall fearing. I mean, you know, I got a job. We worked. Mm -hmm. We had the biggest band high school ever had. We had, um, you know, we had a lot going for us and felt simple about it. We didn't... We didn't and feel was, like we had everything. No, we and I, shared, and we. It wasn't that we expected it either. No. It was just a common way of life, and we thought that's the way it would be forever. Yeah. You know? Well, our generation, I think, was so fortunate because when when our guys did come home, they just got busy and started building Hedinger. I mean, you remember mm -hmm. all the things that got built in the late, late 40s and the early 50s. I mean, Hedinger was the place to be and the place to go, the new creamery building, and, and I mean, just... Well, you could get a job there. Yeah, you we could get a We printed butter mm -hmm. and got money, you know, worked in J.C. Penney's uh, doing all the, the stuff. We always had jobs. Right. And we... Um, but our town was flourishing. It really was. It and was... It was for a long time, so yeah, it was so fun to go downtown. You could go downtown, spend all day there because you walk down the street and you just meet so many people. You stand and visit, and people coming and going in and out of the stores. We <laughs> could we could pretty much get everything we needed well, we right here in Hedinger. No. We didn't have to shop out of town. No, we never well, did. Uh, mm. And most people didn't. Most people. Still, in the early days, couldn't drive to Dickinson right. because they didn't have a car. Well, Dad had a car. We always had a vehicle, but he worked for the Postal Service. Mm -hmm. So he had a car to run the mail route. Mm -hmm. I don't ever remember us not having a car. And Dabo and Papa had nice Dodges, <laughs> <laughs> red, blue, and we'd borrow their car to take the band to Dickinson mm -hmm. when we had to perform. Yeah. We And my mother was the head of the band parents organization that arranged mm -hmm. for kids to play and get horns when they couldn't afford to buy them and uh, get all those kids in cars uh, to Dickinson. Yep. I remember that. But we didn't have any cars to drive around oh, as, yeah. as kids in town. You know, like. So how did you learn to drive? You I, I, I learned out in my uncle's pasture. <laughs> he took me out there, okay. and my dad, and that's how I learned well, to you drive. You had that jeep. In high school, though. yeah, that was in high school. But <laughs> early on, I guess he thought the pasture was wide open. I couldn't get in much trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's how I learned. I had to drive the mail route. <laughs> and I was the only daughter that had the guts to drive his cars. And then I said, well, I was going to drive his car whether he liked it or not, and I was going to go up and down Main Street. Did you get caught? I did. Yes. I drove his cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Did you, was the Strand Theater was running? Oh, yes. That, that you yeah. went to movies? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we had roller skating in the old cents. sheep shed. Oh. oh, yeah, in the sheep barn. Do you remember the roller skating? Oh, how fun that was. Yeah. The building isn't there anymore. We called it the old sheep yeah. shed. But, uh, oh, and it had a balcony. Uh -huh. Oh, it was so Remember fun. that? Yes, I sure do. Yeah, and we'd rainbow play basketball in, in, uh, on the lower floor and, and uh, the balcony mm -hmm. up front. The theater had a balcony, too. That's what I heard. What do you mean, <laughs> that's what you heard? <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was a good life. Um, and I don't recall 
in those early years that there were a lot of groups that bunched together kind of in a oh, no. uh, special mm -hmm. thing. I think everybody had respect well, in most cases. Uh, you know, there was bound to be, you know, two or three, maybe four kids that if you walk to school together and walk home from school, you get to be yeah. uh, a group. But I don't recall that that our generation was clicky. Do you? Well, there were, no. you know, I, I think we shared a lot. There were a lot of girls in a clique, if there was a clique. I mean, it wasn't yeah. just one or two. Yeah. Because well, this uh, is 54 and this yeah. is 55. Mm -hmm. And even our school reunions have been together most of the time. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, marriages. Oh, yeah. Uh, between the two classes, too. We went to, to most of our high school in the old school. Mm -hmm. uh, the gym was built, uh, uh, the auditorium was built in 1950, I think. But we still had classes in the old school. That was fun. You could kind of hide in the old school. There were places you could go to hide. Well, and if you were up on the top floor, you know, when there wasn't a class, you were put in there. Mm -hmm. And then on the east side, there was a fire uh, deal all the way Fire down yep. and uh, Delroy Holt and I when we were in there we could we would sneak out and go to Dale's Variety oh really for a <laughs> milkshake and one day we got down there and guess who beat us Gordon <laughs> Renke <Mr>. <laughs> we didn't do that again oh. that's a little bit later <laughs> on than, than World War II yeah uh, we're getting Ahead of ourselves. We were, into, we were into the Korean War by that time. <laughs> but it was amazing that what we did in this small town was like it was. I know it. Because when you consider that we were all there and the band type of things that we did from early on that led, you know, to Norman Smith's time mm -hmm. and... Um, Bonnie. I mean, we did very well. Yes, we did. In, uh, we were in the top ten bands in North Dakota. We have a big book. Mm -hmm. And we were there for several years. I don't remember. Yeah. But Mr. Um, Lyman? The, yeah. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Lyman. Mm -hmm. He was amazing. Well, I'll and tell you what. When we sang, the gowns had to be all the same length. So whether you were short or tall, you... The, and you had to have the same color shoes. Mm -hmm. In band, we wore white socks and black shoes. We, we weren't allowed to tap our feet. We were uh, very disciplined. And, you know, it, it grew character. And when we played at ball games, we were in full uniform. Every time. Mm -hmm. And Mother washed five sets of white <laughs> pants. <laughs> Hanging in the basement with wire oh, things. Yeah. Stretching. Yeah. And she threatened us with our life if we didn't come home and change and hang them up. So she didn't have to do it again. Well, I was in choir. I wasn't in band. And Lyman came to me and said, Why aren't you in band? Uh, I don't know. I suppose, uh, I don't know. All the music your father has, and you're not in this band, you're going to be our drummer. Oh. So I beat on that damn yeah. thing. <laughs> I had to and play I, a French I, horn. I forget how many so heads on I've never that. seen you carrying your French horn. You passed your house. Yeah. Yeah. And every once in a while, the collie would be out yeah. chasing me a little bit <laughs> down there. <laughs> well, life was good. It was a struggle sometimes, but... Uh, we didn't really realize it at the time. I now don't when, think we felt like we no. struggled. No, and when we different. look back on it, I, you know, I wonder, oh, how in the world did we manage? But we did and didn't realize it at the time, I think. 
Do you remember back to the war days? Do you remember any special uh, community celebrations or? Oh, very mm -hmm. patriotic. Uh, Memorial Day services were unbelievable. Filled up the gym at the school. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It really was. And there was a display in the window of the Adams County Record with all of our local service people. I remember I used to stand there and just look at the pictures and because we knew so many of the people. They were people from, you know, next door, mm -hmm. the church. Or somebody had gone to school with them or whatever, and it was uh, a nice display. And, you know, just everybody was really patriotic. There was a little bit, I remember a little bit of... Um, anti-German, anti-Japanese feelings. Yes. Not so much with the Japanese, but we did have, you know, there were a lot of people that came from Germany and settled here. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know that even all the Germans weren't necessarily Nazis, but they were from Germany. Mm -hmm. And there was a little bit of... A, yeah, there was. Because... Some of the older people from Germany, you can't help but f have that tie mm -hmm. to your home country. Mm -hmm. But there was never any protests or never any oh, no. thing like you know, that. We listened to the radio when we were any. old enough. It was Super McGee and Molly and all of those yeah. programs well, up then. Her uncle was in uh, World War II and lost his life in. In no, the, he lost uh, his life just the helicopter went down. Oh, a helicopter. And that was yeah. the year we graduated. But that was in the water. Yeah, but it was 1955. Mm. Oh, 55. Mm. Oh, I thought it was. No. Were the some of the soldiers that were killed, were they buried here? or were they... I don't think so. No. And I had a cousin that was killed, and it, it was... Um, just shortly before the stock, or after the stocking boys had been killed. The stockings, one was on Okinawa, and the other one was in France. And then my cousin was in the Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom got a letter from him several weeks after we knew that he was mm -hmm. dead, which was a really good sample of the way they handled the mail, very censored. You know, they'd go through every letter and because the guys weren't supposed to tell anybody where they were, what they were doing. But the, the whole gist of his letter was that he knew that he would not be coming back. Mm -hmm. and, and he was just thanking Mom for all she oh. had done for him and that uh, for her to, to be assured that everything was all right with him and the Lord and he loved his country and he knew that this was his job. Mm -hmm. And so that mm -hmm. was that was hard, but um, on on a note about that, we we just have all these years assumed that he was buried in a common grave, or maybe not even buried. Who knows what happened because those tanks were hit with bazooka fire. Mm -hmm. But not long ago, I got a call from a genealogist in New York and asked me if I was first cousin to Gerald Craig, and I said, yes, I am. And and uh, he didn't have a family, and his sibling and his mother are, are gone, and so they were tracing DNA. Oh. And uh, I asked her, I said, well, have you found his remains? And she said, I can't tell you that. Oh. But she said, you will probably be contacted by the Army. So what that means, I don't know. Maybe they're gathering DNA to have it available if and when they find the remains. This is all part of uh, President Reagan's plan to repatriate. Uh, you know, they're trying to bring all of our oh, soldiers that. Yeah. from wherever, from mm -hmm. whatever war, and they're working very hard at it. And it, now things are moving a little faster because DNA procedures mm -hmm. have improved so mm -hmm. dramatically that they can do that. But I got kind of a funny feeling, mm -hmm. you know, when I thought we've just thought he was buried there in France mm -hmm. or in 
uh, Germany. Wow. So. so we knew a lot of the people, and, you know, um, a lot of the guys that served in the war we knew very, very well. And everywhere we went, there were just prayers constantly going up, no matter what gathering there was. That was the first thing that was taken care of, mm. was prayers for our servicemen. Every church in town and every oh. public meeting and every banquet that you went to or whatever you did, very, very strong patriotism in this neck of the woods. Unbelievable. That's why I get so sad on Memorial Day when nobody comes to Memorial <laughs> Day service. <laughs> Well, it's a different world. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sure is. Were there a lot of dances? Was Pappy Stokes playing for dances around the area at that time? Or? I don't remember when he started, <laughs> but there were dances. I, but we uh, were too young. No. Well, yeah. But uh, they'd have dances out at the airport, wasn't it? Yes. At they the did. at the hangar. That was a yep. Mother's Day. Uh, yeah. Not our day. Mother and Dad went to the airport and danced oh, when they got yeah. together, and uh, okay. that's when they got, you uh, know, before yeah. they were married. That was their place well, to dance. Well, when Dad got back from uh, the war, why, Mother and Dad, that was a, a big thing for them, and uh, they knew uh, Pappy Stokes uh -huh. and uh, followed him around all yeah. over the place, and I can remember uh, going to those uh, uh, I, uh, f when they would go to one of those dances, and here would uh, he after the dance we were home, and here comes Pappy and uh, John uh, Johnson from from Lemon and uh, Jewel. and uh, the other one. Yeah. Uh, he lived in Hedinger, the drummer. Yeah. Uh, Otterberg. Well, Otterberg was Otterberg from was Lemon, was but he um, was from Lemon. Wagendorf. Wagendorf, oh, Wagendorf oh, was yeah. the drummer. Yeah. And uh, we sat in the stairway <laughs> listening to the music at the house. Yeah. But that was long after. World Did anybody World. have music in their homes or dances in their homes, or is that a different generation too? Yeah. We didn't. I that must have been before. I don't know that we I did. Think. I don't think there was room. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that, you know, for those of us that have stayed here in the area, I think we were privileged because we watched Hedinger grow uh, because, you know, we didn't have paved streets when we were in school. We didn't have decent curb and gutter. Uh, sidewalks were just chunks of concrete, and we, but we roller skated on them. We'd roller skate, and then mm -hmm. we'd run across the part that was broken and, and get up on the next block. And um, so we were able to watch all this mm -hmm. stuff happen, and um, the um, areas that were annexed to the city. You know, Hedinger was a lot smaller when we were kids. Uh, the city limits were right oh, by yeah. the, your grandpa and grandma. Yeah. And uh, now there was that's, nothing across there was the street, nothing till, across the street. So until Mansings built their house, there. we were we were lucky to be able to watch that, and uh, watch the hospital be built. And you had to walk, yeah, if you made you had to walk across the hayfield. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The hospital started. They started that in 1949 to oh, build it, uh -huh. and it opened in 1950, I think, in January. Right. In fact. Right. Funny story about that. They had a dedication at the Lutheran Church, and my dad was master of ceremonies, and Cecil Melby must have been mayor at that time. And so, here comes Dad. He's introducing the mayor, and uh, he's. He's walking down from the what do you call front it? of the church. The, yeah. yeah, and then Melby's coming up, yeah. and Dad leans over and says, "Your zipper's down." <laughs> and of course it wasn't. <laughs> he's he's there behind this thing, wiggling around. <laughs> oh, that's lots of fun. 
that one. That damn fool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look back at it as a whole picture, and, and I'm sure I must have missed something, because I, I, it wasn't all bad. It was, there was some healing there, or there was some, maybe it was a, an explanation by your parents that, that stuck with you, but I, I don't feel that I didn't have anything, mm -hmm. and I didn't lose anything. I was sad when my father was gone for three years or more, but uh, I felt good about where I was. I felt good about our parents. I felt good about everything. I was very positive. Can you name some of the kids in your neighborhood? Who do you remember? Oh my goodness. Well, the Almonds were just oh, Tom, Jerry Almond, yeah. Marla, uh, Roland Nelson, and, and Tom the Millers, Nancy, Marley and Miller. Tom and, and, Manson. Uh, yeah. All those kids that lived up there. Um, at least uh, near our age, anyway. Mm -hmm. And then just a, a f block further would be the Amsh kids yeah, and, and Mary Stewart and, you know, yeah. that. I don't remember kids. that they were as involved as some of us that were just yeah, they right probably, there. Well, they probably weren't allowed to go more than a block or two away from home. I think of us as free-range kids, mm -hmm. but... We might have thought that our mother wasn't watching, but somebody's mother was in the oh, neighborhood. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, we were not unattended. Or, no, so. no you'd, you know, <clears throat> the parents could get a call once in a while. I'm, I'm just letting you know what I saw. You know, they, <laughs> yeah. they weren't bad-mouthing or anything. No. They, they cared about yeah. somebody getting in trouble, and they would call the parents. Yeah. The streets were not lighted very well, which was good for us in the evening when we were playing games. But And we always called it the lamppost. Yeah. That's a throwback from several generations. Yeah. But it was just a, a little incandescent light. And um, you remember Mrs. Burem that would come and chant and put the new bulbs in? She had that long stick with the prong thing on the end. You don't remember that? I don't oh, remember I that. I remember that. That was fascinating to watch her yeah. put in the... Her husband was the water superintendent, uh -huh. but she did a lot of the, the work because he, he was a cop and the water superintendent and, you know, several different positions. But, yeah, not a very powerful light out there. <laughs> well, my grandmother Peterson's sold uh what's that cosmetic avon avon when she was still walking the, the town when she was 62 years old walking around and in the winter time her uh, mother or aunt uh, alice would give her a ride around but mm -hmm. otherwise she walked yes yeah, she did she and sold you know that. as far as the hospital is concerned um they put Dabu to work. When she uh, closed her hospital, she worked as an RN mm -hmm. uh, at and she night. she was an RN. <laughs> and she never had a nickel's worth of education. Mm -hmm. They gave her an LPN pen that somebody had hanging around so she could pin it on her dress. She never had a nickel's worth of... Uh, and she knew she worked just like an RN. Oh, sure. She knew and, she was doing. Uh, and how many babies was it? 1,147. <laughs> but that was why at the hospital we always felt that there was improvement too. You know, good things always continued to happen because that's how Hittinger was. Mm -hmm. And Jean and I used to get, uh, you know, uh, we made 200 and some dollars a month and we got a 10 cent raise. We thought we were really in business. Oh, I know, okay. I and know. Yeah. But we continually grew and got better and better and built and built. And that's the way we felt as kids. We never saw bad things. I mean, mm -hmm. to lead us to feel that we weren't going to survive. I mean, today, 
when we see the struggle of Hedinger and what we're doing to, you know, um, you, when you compare that, we, we didn't ever have to feel that struggle because no. we were just always going forth. The growth, uh, yes. we, were, we were witnesses to yes. the growth of Hedinger, really yes. we were. In the late forties and, and but 40s. I, as adults, I think we we saw we didn't really saw little by little, year by year, mm -hmm. it was changing, mm -hmm. and we didn't. A lot of us didn't realize what was happening there. A lot of outside influences too. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, that yeah. and you know, then as as. Family dynamics began to change because historically, you know, if Grandpa had the hardware store, then it would be Dad's store, and then it would be Junior's store, mm -hmm. you know, and there was that community connection, family connection, mm -hmm. and so when that whole idea changed, our Main Street changed. Because we didn't have that family lineage there in our business. And community. the other thing is, is that as kids, we learned how to improvise. And we had an imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we learned that with the growth mm -hmm. and how things were. And people worked terribly hard in our generation, but they expected to work hard. That's right. It wasn't that they sat there and said, oh, poor me. Yeah. And, you know, even as a nurse, we used to sharpen our needles. And we used glass syringes so that we could, uh, you know, sterilize, sterilize them. Mm -hmm. And even sterilized uh, formula with nipples that just got to be so ragged that you <laughs> drowned the kid. And I remember staying one morning after a night shift and cutting all the nipples into little tiny pieces and told the administrator that I did that. I sure hoped his nipples were in order <laughs> because he was glad. I mean, we, we grew. Oh, yeah. We got sick of what they didn't take care of, and we went forth. <laughs> How do you sharpen a needle? We did. We sharpened all the needles. Well, it would be like... We had a, a little... Uh, like an emery board yeah, type emery. thing. Yeah. That's why the shots hurt so bad. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we learned, we learned that from the nuns oh. when we went to school. Oh. And, um, and there, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, if you didn't have it, you had to look around and find out what you could use to make the same thing work. Mm -hmm. We didn't have kits or any of those things. We just went in the storeroom uh -huh. and figured out what we needed. And but you had kids, yeah. too, that wanted to graduate and go to college and go on. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and maybe there was always a little of that, but not so much as it is today, yeah. which is kind of sad. But uh, can, can you take me back? To, to your earliest years and take take us down Main Street. Uh, what what this, take us down the west side of Main Street and mm. then come up the east side. What, what, what stores do you remember? Oh, Pennies. Well, we start out the Yellowstone Hotel. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and then, then we uh, had the candy company. There was a hardware was there. store there, wasn't there? Yeah. And, and, and later, and, and Gamble's was down a little ways. And then for a while, there was a Super Value store yes. there. Yeah. Chris yeah. Alverson's. And there was a gamble store. Yep. And the bank was there. And well, of course, uh, the, the dress shop. shop was there. Yep. John shop and was that, there. The cleaners. Oh, yes. The cleaners uh, the were The cleaners. Next. Yeah. That um, Linquist. Oh, yeah. And then the bank, of course. And there was the bar was there. And Best the Midway. Time. And the bakery. Yeah. Oh, the bakery. Oh, yeah. The bakery was by the Midway bar. Oh. And then there was Adolph's. And they had the cafe, yeah. and then he built on, so there was... Uh, well, there was a Farmer's Union grocery store, Quicksteads yep. grocery Quick Steads store. And Dale's Red Variety. Owl. And Red Owl store down on the corner. Yeah, J.C. Penney's and, and the theater. The theater. Matt Halverson's Jewelry yes. Palace yep. yeah. is where, uh, well, it's called the Piano Studio now, yeah. but that was the jewelry store. That's where her wedding, her initial wedding ring came from, Halverson's Jewelry. Yeah. 
And <clears throat> then you want us to go back up on the east side? Yeah. Where okay, from? well, it would have been the Lakeview Hotel. Okay. Where Carmel's. There yes. was another cafe. And there. then the Lakeview Cafe. Well, Rexall Drug. Rexall Drug. Yeah, and that was. Uh, and, um, pharmacy. Um, um, another pharmacy. Well, Rodman's. there was a men's barber shop. Yep. White's mm -hmm. Hardware. Irene's Drug Shop. Yeah, and, Rodman's and then Drug there, Store. There was a shoe repair shop there, Pop Shane. Shoe repair Cub shop. Cub Shoes. Yeah. 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 Cub Sanger. Uh, well, who's that lady that had that dress shop? Irene Matakoviak. Matakoviak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, she was something. My mother loved to go shopping at her store. Sure. In spite of her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to get some advertising out of her. Do you think I could? <laughs> no way. <laughs> she was nice about it, but we were going to do what that. What was on that corner there where the beauty shop is now? Was what? Lambert's Electric. There you go. What? Um, Lambert's, Lambert's Electric. electric. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and then up the street was Melling's, another barber shop. And there was Edna's dress shop eventually. Well, that was um, hardware. Eventually, our. E.C. Thomas. Yeah. Oh, E.C. Yeah. Thomas. Yeah. Yes. Moved the, up lawyer. the street. Yeah. 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 And Archie Guards. Yeah, the Western Store. Yeah. And then the building um, on, on the, next to the highway, that was a bowling alley at one time. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, not right next to the highway. It would be the next one down. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Where uh, the one right on the corner, uh, remember Jonas Johnson had his paint store there. Oh, yeah. yes. And then Lyle yeah. Stewart had yeah. his law office there. And there was and a then floor when shop did there. they build yeah, but when did they build the new bowling alley? Because Virginia and Lyle um, managed the bowling alley, the new one. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been well, we were in high school, so that would have been in the yeah. early fifties. So in the Warriors <coughs> was the post office where it was? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. And then uh, <coughs> Seventh and eighth grade was in that apartment, uh, Shriners, uh, mm -hmm. right Our next house. to the post office. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, we had so many kids in school. Yeah. We didn't fit, so they took the junior high and moved us up to the motel, and we walked back and forth. If we had to go to band or choir, we had to on walk the north back side. and forth. Oh. Felix Gunther and yeah. Richard Gordon were our oh. chaperones, <laughs> <laughs> and. There were so many. Gunther of us. would would give us uh, one or two uh, questions was going to be on the next uh, test, and give us the answer to, <laughs> but just two. Yeah. But no kids ever misbehaved in his class. <laughs> Mr. Well, Gordon had another trouble. <laughs> you know, during during the war years, there were, there were just a lot of kids in school. You know, but that was back in the day when every just about every family had four or five, sometimes six kids. And uh, yeah, there was three first grades. Mm, really? Yeah, three first grades and. Uh, um, Trying to think of who, uh, oh, Chris's daughter, Chris Alverson's daughter. Oh, Mary, Mary Joan. Joan. Mary Joan. Shellcraft. Yeah. She taught one of the classes. And um, that was a big, I think when, um, when Leah graduated, there was 70, 80 kids. 72. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there was a class at one time that had 100 in. I don't know if they all graduated. I don't know. But, yeah. but that was later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And now, <laughs> sad. that's sad to see, too. So when you were growing up in during the war, then there was no Halverson Super Value up no, north. No. That, no. that was just prayer. Oh, there was a little house that, uh, that was yeah. Yeah. little house. That right. was a uh, dormitory. 
that was the boys' dormitory. Burrams lived there uh, during World War II. And, and they were, kept were, their pies. Yeah, it was, it was up on a yeah, bank. Yeah. You all we used to play on that, but uh, yeah, and it no, was a but big. There was a little White House uh, on that lot, next that to the, the next, highway. That uh, and uh, and yeah. north to the next street. Yeah, but the one where where the super or Kennedys is mm -hmm. now. That was a big old fashioned yes. house. Yes. With I think two and a half stories. And who and lived didn't right Ranky next door? Lived there? Well, Ranky's, Ranky's yeah, lived Ranky. there, but before that, oh. yeah. years ago, uh, it was a, a dormitory for high school kids. For, and, for like farm kids? Yeah. Oh. And Mrs. Burham was the house mother. Was that Grace White's mother? Yeah. I forgot that. Yep. Huh. That's the same lot where that plane crashed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Got tangled up in uh, it was a plane. wires. I don't remember who the pilot was. But I don't remember. Right where Halverson's was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, on, on a the little bit north. Lot, but, right yeah. across the street from, uh, well, Halverson's was here and was the house that was right here at the end of the block. Well, yeah, there north. was a little house when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. It was Mrs. Gullickson. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Gullickson's house. Oh, was there? Oh, really? Yeah. But the plane got caught into some telephone Highline wires line, yeah. or something. Was somebody killed? I don't uh, know. I can't remember. I can't remember yeah. either whether it was. Seems yeah, like it. Yeah, that was a dormitory on there. And then, you know, the research center was also a dormitory mm -hmm. at one time. So there were, there were just a lot of kids. And then a lot of the rural families... Brought their kids. They stayed with people here in town. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, we that had, was even happening when we were buried. Mm-hmm. We had, they stayed at our house. We had some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a, well, I think that um, we owe a, a real debt of gratitude to our parents, their generation. I just think they did a pretty good job on us. I agree. Don't you think? Yeah. They taught us. In spite of us. Yeah. I mean, they really did teach us what it, what it means to be a part of a community and that you don't take from the community. You give. And, um, you know, that all of us were fed and clothed and taken good care of. And I think that... You should always remember as you progress and you make changes to get better that you could always look back on what has been to fill in the spaces and to use uh, information from other generations mm -hmm. to continue with good progress because there's a lot to be said for how we got it started in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, in, in uh, some uh, situations, that's what you're doing here to bring that history forward. Mm -hmm. And we can all learn from history. So, I, I remember one other thing. I, do you remember the, the, the favorite gums, chewing gums, oh, yes. and some of those names? Yes. Well, and uh, my dad would send that from... Uh, overseas mm. and we couldn't get it here huh? well we'd go to school and we have all these favorite and everybody was thinking they should Maybe have a friend. piece of gum too yeah. <laughs> and I can't come up with the names now well, but there were lots of different like blackjack Black or chicken. Or yeah well, that would be one of Yucatan, them Yucatan double mint spearmint yeah. well they're yeah. still here today but yeah. Uh, well, there was a, these weren't a, available at least at that time. There here. was a hot cinnamon one too. What was that? That was That's, you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, I still God. think you should tell them about no, that game. No, no. Right. You've got our interest here. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, we were pretty good friends yeah. our whole life. Well, the whole community or the whole area, you know, we just grew up together. We went to school together. 
but I, I think that those roots from that era, I think they just go so deep. It's hard to express it. It's hard to put it into words. Whether it was World War II that brought people together in a common cause or what it was, but it certainly filtered down to our generation. And, yeah. and our parents were amazing, absolutely amazing, what they were able to accomplish well, on so went, little. Yes, and the women went to work in factories. Yes. But this goes again just to how hard everybody worked, but they didn't feel bad or sorry for themselves oh, no. because they had to do it. And I think that has come forward to help and should help. Yeah. I think, too, though, uh, to some extent, every generation can say that. When I hear the stories of my dad and even older folks, I, uh, both my grandfathers had died before I was born. I had two very nice grandmothers and how they came across uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so, but yes, I agree with Betty, it, it, it helped us and some of it we probably didn't realize at the time, but uh, we turned out pretty good, didn't we? Oh, well, we should ask someone other than us, probably. <laughs> oh, I don't, I, I don't think I want to do that. Uh. <laughs> but, thank you.